Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. It's the time of the year where I'm getting tons of colubrid eggs. That means most of my day is spent just collecting those eggs. I'm gonna take you guys through the process. You're watching Snake Bites. So obviously we're right in the middle of the colubrid egg production season, which means we're getting tons of eggs every single day. Let me walk you through that process. As you can see on these cages, there's a bunch of red tags. That's what we call lay tags. What basically happens with the colubrid is seven to 10 days after they shed, they're gonna lay their first clutch of eggs. I basically go through and look at all the cages that have those red tags, and we mark them with either orange or green stickers just so I can go through afterwards and start pulling the eggs. Let me take you through that process really quick. This female has an orange tag on it so we know that there's a clutch of eggs. To be honest with you, I'm not sure if they're fertile or not fertile yet, so basically every time I open up this box, it's like Christmas. You never know what you're going to find. It could be a good clutch, it could be a bad clutch, it could be a small amount of eggs, or in this case it looks like a beautiful clutch and quite a few eggs. This is actually an albino cow king that's actually het for lavender snow. She was bred to a lavender snow male, so hopefully we'll get some nice lavender snows. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to get this female back in her cage so she doesn't mess up the eggs or anything else and uh, we'll worry about her in a minute. As you can see, she still needs water and everything. We actually remove the water because a good tip to you guys is once they shed out, really important to get that water out of there because some snakes will actually lay their eggs in their water even if they have a nest box and a water clutch, the eggs always go bad, which you don't want to have happen. So after I get the eggs out, I'm going to count them. This clutch has two, four, six, eight, ten eggs. Ten eggs is not a bad clutch for a cow king. I'm pretty excited about that. And again, my odds are probably two or three lavender snows in this clutch, so I'm pretty excited. Once I get that done, I'm going to actually mark in my egg data book. I actually have the cages all numbered, so I know that this girl is actually F10. So in an F10 cage, I'm going to put the female down, I'm going to put the male that sired the clutch, and I'm going to put the amount of eggs in this. I'm going to also duplicate that on top of this egg box and get these guys into incubation. Then I move on to the next cage and I just keep on repeating that. All right guys, it's Cal's question of the week. This episode was all about collecting. You know, we collect a lot of snakes, we collect eggs, there's always a collection of bites at this place. But you know what, there's a lot of people that collect other things. Uh, for instance, I collect hockey cards and I used to collect rocks, even little Captain Planet fanny pack, but we won't go into that. Anyway, I want to know from you guys what you guys collect other than snakes. Text a video comment below. Let me know. On to the next cage. This is actually a banana cow king. It's a female. Again, I haven't really seen if there's fertile or infertile eggs in this clutch. And what's really cool about her is she's not a super high yellow banana cow king. And there is a nice clutch. It's not a very big clutch, but it's definitely a nice clutch. But what's cool is she's bred to a really pretty male. So there's a good chance of having really high yellow banana cow kings. We've got a black and white cow king bred to a high white black and white cow king. And the thing I noticed here is the female's actually already out of the egg box, which is kind of good because the reason you want them out of there is the females can do a couple things. They can roll eggs around or believe it or not, especially with cow kings, they will actually eat their clutch of eggs. So that's the reason why as soon as I can get them away from their eggs, I try to do it. In this case, it was really awesome because she actually moved away from her clutch all on her own. So I was able to pull them out of here. Let's see what kind of eggs they actually are. And actually, this is a beautiful clutch of cow kings. Um, that's quite a few eggs for a cow king. Typically about 10 eggs is about the most you're going to get. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15 eggs. 15 eggs from a cow king is absolutely fantastic. I'm used to 12, 13 egg clutches being really big, so I'm super excited that she laid so many eggs. That was a fantastic clutch for that girl. Here's a Puebla milk that just laid, and as you can see, this is a pretty disappointing clutch. Basically what I have here is three bad egg. These are infertile and these go right into the garbage. There's actually one good egg in this clutch. A lot of times when you have fertility problems like this, this egg may not even hatch. But I'm certainly going to set it up in the box and make sure that it, it has a chance at least. When incubating snake eggs, an important thing to think about is incubation medium. In my case, I use vermiculite for colubrids. I use hatch right for pythons, which is fantastic. And some people even use perlite. The most important thing is the right consistency. So when I take a handful of vermiculite, I can squeeze it and no water will actually come out. The actual ratio is one for one water to vermiculite ratio. When he's dead. 
All right, so that finishes my day of collecting eggs. And you might ask, why did I just throw those eggs up on top of the shelf? Well, the truth is, colubrids need to incubate at 80 or 82 degrees Fahrenheit. It just so happens that this shelf stays at 82 almost all the time. And I would need a huge incubator to incubate these eggs. As a matter of fact, today alone, we pulled 1,200 eggs. And that's a pretty typical day this time of year. We'll do this for about 30 days. And then guess what? We'll start all over with second clutches and do it again. The coolest part is, in 60 days, we're going to have thousands of babies hatching. For this week's Common of the Week on the Snake Breeding for Dummies episode, the question was, if you could breed anything in the world, what would it be? And Lone Herper said, If I could breed anything in the world, I would breed Rosie O'Donnell x Donald Trump. The offspring would be the Antichrist, therefore the end of the world. <laughs> Wow, I don't even know what to say about that, but that would be one scary combination. Until next time, you guys keep sending me creative comments. I'm going to feature you on a future episode. Snake myths, fact or fiction. Hey, Brian. What's I know up, it's man? been a while, but uh, I got a snake myth for you. A viewer sent me one in saying that if you had toothpaste on your hand, would a snake be less likely to bite you? And I know that cinnamon toothpaste tastes like shit, but I mean, do you really believe that? <laughs> well... I'm not sure why anyone would want to have toothpaste on their hand and handle a snake, but uh, it's like I've said, we'll test any myth, so what do you have in mind? I think Chewy is the only idiot that would ever have toothpaste on his hand, so we should probably start with him. Let's do it. The first thing we're going to do is test to see if the snake will bite me with nothing on my hands. Are you ready? Oh, ow! Let me hold you. I'm your friend Chewie, friend of all snakes. Ah! Ow! 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 You stupid! Ah! God! Come on, you're ruining a tan, you stupid! Ah! I'm go. Ah! 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 <laughs> Clearly, that snake was ready to bite. But me being a professional, I'm going to try the toothpaste to prove the myth. Toothpaste, please. Okay. Woo! Your mouth is dirty from chewing on your Uncle Choo Choo. Here you go. It seems to be detoured by the toothpaste. He doesn't seem to want to strike me. I, don't, I think it worked. With the toothpaste on the hand, he didn't seem to want to bite. But now, I'm going to test it on my face because that's usually where your toothpaste is found. So, a little toothpaste on my cheeky poo. Come give your Uncle Chewy a key. I got toothpaste, you don't want to bite me with no toothpaste, do you? Mmm, let me give me a kiss. Mm. No. Alright, so I need to know what happened. Well, actually, surprisingly, I think the toothpaste worked. So Chewie put his hand in the snake's cage without the toothpaste. Got bit. Pretty good bite, too. Then, the toothpaste on his hand didn't get bit. He even put the toothpaste on his cheek, tried to kiss a snake, still didn't get bit. So I'm gonna have to say that the toothpaste actually worked. So what you're saying is someone with chronic halitosis is more likely to get bit. Sure, whatever. All right, I'm gonna leave this one up to you. Right, I'm gonna have to go with fact. <laughs> fact, okay. who would've known? So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the show, and I think you guys understand how I certainly have my hands full with all these eggs, which means in about 60 days, we're going to have some really cool babies. Speaking of cool stuff, next week, we're going to take you through the clutches that we're the most excited about. Don't forget, there's the Member of the Month contest over on our community site. The link is down below. you got to join to be a part of it. Until next time, you've been watching Snake Bites.